This is a fascinating chapter to me for so many reasons. First of all, the majority of this chapter is an actual ancient document dictated by the king of Persia, Artaxerxes. Listen to how he addresses his own letter. From Artaxerxes, the king of kings, to Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law of the God of heaven. He calls himself king of kings, and while that may seem arrogant, it was probably factually correct among earthly kings and kingdoms at that time. We can even learn his intent or the reasoning behind his favor toward Ezra. Verse 23 says, Be careful to provide whatever the God of heaven demands for his temple, for why should we risk bringing God's anger against the realm of the king and his sons? See, even this great king with the most powerful army knew about the greatness of Yahweh and wanted to be on his good side. But another fascinating thing about chapter 7 to me is that in Ezra's very own book, he isn't even mentioned until chapter 7. I believe that says a lot about his humility and character. He wasn't one to stand out in a crowd or give himself a title like priest of priests or scribe of scribes. Verse 10 says, The gracious hand of God was on him because Ezra had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and to teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. Ezra was known by his passion and zeal for serving his God. Here, this king, this unlikely ally, essentially gives Ezra a blank check to take whatever God wants to rebuild the temple. And here's the lesson for us. When we change our desires, our passions toward pleasing God and doing his work, when we seek his fame, not our own, then we will see our prayers answered in the most unlikely of ways. Psalm 37 says this, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you.